Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here for Crime 2 News First at 5. I'm Whitney Ward, and my colleague Mark Hanrahan is there at the Crime 2 Studios tonight. Hi, Mark. Hey, good evening to you, Whitney. We want to get straight to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry because, Tom, you're tracking some thunderstorms moving into our area right now. Yeah, during the 4 o'clock broadcast, we saw them north of town. They've now moved down into the Spokane area, specifically out along Highway 2, moving towards the Airway Heights area. Again, this is the particular storm that is impacting the, will impact the Spokane area. We've We've received uh, reports of heavy, heavy rain out of these storms, anywhere between a half inch of rain and an inch of rain. We've had flood advisories issued for areas of Bonners County and Southern Stevens County. We haven't had an advisory yet issued for Spokane County. Now we've got the storms, as you can see, just making their way onto I-90 down towards Sprague in between Sprague and Ritzville. So watch out for, for potential ponding of water on the roadways there. Here's a uh, uh, kind of a bird's eye view and you can see most of the storms are centered across eastern Washington, north of I-90, but they're beginning to wrap around and are moving pretty quickly. So uh, the, we anticipate that these storms will be uh, decreasing in intensity within, the, say, the next 90 minutes or so, and they will also continue to move to the south. You can see the rain falling now in downtown Spokane. That's a live picture right there. We were at 70 degrees at 4 o'clock. We've dropped now down to 64 degrees, and look at the wind out of the northwest at 22 miles an hour. Again, we'll look for partly cloudy skies later this evening and overnight with a low of 50. 76 the expected high tomorrow. Still on track for temperatures in the 70s over the weekend with thunderstorms possible. We hear the thunderstorms happening right now uh, in our area right here on the South Hill. Uh, so take cover. Remember when it roars, you head indoors. Mark. All right, Tom, thank you very much. We think that some of the major metrics that are required uh, have been met by the county and stuff. So we're anxious for the uh, uh, health officer to uh, uh, weigh in and uh, uh, move us to that next phase. Our other top story tonight, the push for phase three in Spokane County. The Board of County Commissioners has now signed a letter asking Dr. Bob Lutz for immediate action to reopen. But Dr. Lutz said this morning he still does not think the county is ready to move forward. And he points to the recent data. Krem 2's Amanda Rowley explains. Today, another double digit increase in COVID-19 cases. The Spokane Regional Health District is also reporting more hospitalizations. Health Officer Dr. Bob Lutz maintains that Spokane County is not yet ready to move on to phase three of reopening. Uh, I can't project when we are ready to go there, but the fact that I'm still getting 10, 15, 20 cases a day, whereas prior to Memorial Day, we were getting oftentimes single digits, that's concerning for me. And so we're not ready to go into phase three. I can't the health district says it has not seen any cases in Spokane County relating to the recent protests. While some counties in Washington are encouraging protesters to get tested, Spokane is not. Instead, the health district is only recommending people who are protesting to carefully watch for symptoms and be aware of their increased risk. Spokesperson Kelly Hawkins says they can inquire about testing with their provider or at a CHAZ clinic. When asked why Spokane has not yet expanded to widespread testing, Dr. Lutz says the number of tests has increased by about 2,000. In the last three weeks, we've had 6,000 tests done, whereas in the preceding three weeks, we had had less than 4,000, 3,500 tests. So we are definitely doing more testing. Um, We've talked about the fact that the criteria for testing has been loosened. According to the health district, people who are not showing any symptoms of coronavirus can now get tested if they have been in close contact with a confirmed positive case of COVID-19. Hawkins says CHAZ is more lenient on this and may determine testing is needed based on their evaluation with the individual. CHAZ is also an option for those who do not have a primary care provider. But if you can, she says go through your primary care provider to get tested. You can find testing locations on the SRHD website. Amanda Rowley, Krem 2 News. Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced today that most state employees will be furloughed and a 3% raise for many state employees will be canceled. Let's get straight to Regina on in the newsroom tonight for more on that announcement. Regina. 
While mark general wage increase for most state employees was approved by the state legislature, it was scheduled to go into effect July 1st. Now those raises are canceled for any state employee making more than $53,000. And as we look forward, I hope that we heed the lessons of the last recession, which we are still under the shadow of in mental health and the like. So we have some tough decisions uh, coming up. The canceled raises will impact roughly 5,600 general government employees. Some union-represented and non-represented classified employees will still get the 3% general wage increase. In addition to the canceled raises, more than 40,000 state employees will be required to take one furlough day each week through July 25th. Starting in August, though, employees will be required to take one furlough day each month through the fall. The employee furloughs will begin no later than June 20th. The state also saying the furloughs and the canceled raises will save around $55 million over the next year. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on Mark, back to you. Regina, thank you very much. UK researchers say they've discovered the first drug to dramatically reduce death in the sickest COVID-19 patients, and it's already widely available. Researchers believe dexamethasone can stop the immune system from overreacting to the coronavirus in some hospitalized patients with severe symptoms. They found the drug saves one life for every eight patients on a ventilator and one for every 25 patients on oxygen. So if we'd known this four or five months ago, we would have saved tens of thousands of lives probably. The drug has been... Scientists hope this drug will be one tool to help the sickest COVID patients, but experts caution more research is needed. All right, Whitney investigators still searching for answers after 45 year old Taurus Ogletree was found shot to death on a trail near the Spokane River last Friday. That's right. At this point, police say they're just trying to piece together exactly what happened. But here's what we do know. It was a passerby who ended up calling 911 early Friday morning when they found the man's body in the east central portion of the city. So this is just off of East South Riverton. It's a very popular area for joggers and bikers. Police say they do not believe the murder was random, so people shouldn't be worried about going out to use that portion of the Spokane River Trail. But neighbors in that area told us today they are still a little bit worried. To see this, you know, happen is just, it's gruesome. It's scary. Um, you know, it's, I'm a little app apprehensive with my son walking, you know, um, around here in the evening time. And for the people that live here, you know, we enjoy these walks up and down this river, you know, and it's, you know, you just, it seems like I, every other day or something happening. So anyone with information about what happened there on Friday morning, please call Spokane Police. Well, just yesterday, President Trump signed an executive order for police reform, but it is not legally binding. This morning, Senate Republicans also laid out their bill, again, aimed at reforming police in this country. So this one was a bill that was led by Senator Tim Scott. It includes requirements for police departments to provide more data on serious injuries and death. It also calls for increased training for officers and incentives for police agencies to ban chokeholds. Democrats say there are proposals in Senator Scott's bill they do support, but they believe it doesn't go far enough. The major categories actually mimic our major categories. So I think that shows that there might be room to work together. However, from what I have seen, and again, I haven't read the language of the bill, it looks like he takes the teeth out of some of our proposals. In the U.S. House, lawmakers are putting the final touches on a Democratic police reform package. A vote on that is expected next week. And just days after the death of Rayshard Brooks in Atlanta, Georgia, at least one officer there is now facing 11 criminal charges, including felony murder. So his name is Garrett Rolfe, the officer. He was fired after the death of Rayshard Brooks. He could now face the death penalty or life in prison without parole. The Fulton County District Attorney said Brooks never never displayed any aggressive behavior toward the officers. We have had something quite remarkable to happen in this case, and it involves the testimony of the other officer, Devin Brosnan, because Officer Brosnan has now become a state's witness. He has decided to testify on behalf of the state in this case. 
The officer's disciplinary history shows he has used his firearm twice before Friday's shooting. One of those cases did result in a written reprimand. All right, still to come tonight, there are calls online specifically to boycott the cosmetics company L'Oreal. Turns out that a worker issued some kind of offensive statement reportedly towards white people on social media. It turns out there are some shreds of truth in it, but it's not the whole truth. So we're verifying the facts here in just a few minutes when we come back.